Fairfield Christian Church welcomes Paul Wilbur in concert. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain for us. Son of God. Paul Wilbur in band in concert Saturday evening, May 4th at 7 at the Fairfield Christian Church in Lancaster. Don't miss this exciting night of worship with Paul Wilbur and the Messiah Company dancers. This is a love offering event. Doors open at 6.30. More details at 740-654-0099 or fairfieldchristian.org. Sheriff Dave Phelan, a weekly program here on LSN, television right here in Lancaster, Time Warner, and also we're carried uh, by a number of our radio affiliates throughout Central Ohio. I do appreciate you, the viewers and listeners that join us each and every week where we have guests from, from within the Fairfield County Sheriff's Office and also community leaders. And this week is uh, no exception. We have Tim Welch here with the Pregnancy uh, Decision Health Center. And uh, Tim was here last week, uh, invited him back. And um, before we get started, for those that may have missed the program, tell us a little bit about you, Tim, and also a little bit about uh, what is the Pregnancy Decision Health Center. Well, I'm a longtime Lancaster uh, resident. I've been here mostly all my life. I've got uh, been married for 35 years to the, the, the lovely Joanne, as I refer to her. She is. And um, I have five children, all of whom are, are grown and, and mostly moved away. They move back every now and then just to stay for a little bit, uh, seems like. But um, live right in the sort of right in the heart of town. And, and uh, Pregnancy Decision Health Centers is a very, very special place. It's a place where uh, women who are faced with an unexpected pregnancy can go and and get medically accurate information and and get get uh, in a non-judgmental environment and get loved on like they deserve and that's really what we do more than anything we give them a choice both both they and their child can live with and you were talking about uh, last week that uh, this is primarily uh, supported by donations mm -hmm. and yeah. different things yep donations and volunteers we do have we actually employ 19 people I mean, okay we've, we've got five centers and we've got we've got people we have to have an accountant to account for you know the money so we we do that we have seven nurses that we employ uh, because we want to have professionals uh, talking with these dear souls that um, that ask for our help and you know we have various um, you know we have I do a lot of the fundraising myself, so we don't really have a fundraiser. But we've got various administrative personnel. We own, we actually running five buildings, actually six, because we have an administrative building. Um, you got to have somebody to you know change the light bulbs sure. and do all the stuff, you know. Uh, so we've got a guy that works part time for us that does that, and he makes sure all everything's working properly. And um, you know, last time we talked, we started to talk a little bit about our hotline, which is one of our, from my perspective, one of the things that I am most proud about being associated with PDHC because there aren't very many centers uh, in the country that, are, that actually have their own hotline. We have, a, we have a couple of paid staff that work on it, but we also have, it's about 50% paid staff and 50% volunteers, and we actually we actually answer the phone because we believe that 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 the women who come to us who call us on the phone really deserve the best we have to offer. There are there are national hotlines that could answer the phone and they could send them you know send us notes to set up appointments and stuff like that. But we think that relationship that we start with a woman needs to start on the phone. And then it's carried out when they come to the offices. And, and we think that relationship is really what sets us apart from anybody else. If a um, young lady's out there listening today or, or watching this program, what kind of, and they, they have a, an, a, a, an unexpected pregnancy, what are some things that they can do? Well, um, 
that's a freaky time. It's yeah. a, it's a difficult time. Yeah. And and the only advice that I can give them is just give us a call. Find a find a place if you don't want to. You know, if mom and dad don't know, yeah. You know, it's a difficult time. If mom and dad don't know, or the boyfriend doesn't know, or or whoever is influencing you in your life doesn't know. Find a quiet place and give us a call at four 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 one one. That's area code six one four. But just give us a call. You'll find that you'll you'll find a friend in PDHC. You'll find somebody who cares about you. You'll find somebody who will want to do the best for you. And right. not what's the best for the boyfriend, and not what's the best for mom and dad, not what's the best, but what's the best for you. Because women who make that decision to have an abortion, sometimes it may, it may happen two or three years down the road, it might happen 20 or 30 years down the road, but they learn to regret that. And they sometimes have issues all through their life because of that decision they made in a big hurry because someone was influencing them. What do you say? to the woman out there that has had an abortion and it's just years later and they've, they've kind of regretted that choice well the the two biggest things that they say to us is that either that God cannot forgive this yeah. and then the second thing that's right on the heels of that is I can't forgive myself and so that's a very delicate conversation that you have to have with a woman who is going through there, through that. And the fact is, you and I know we have a we have a forgiving God. Right. And and once God has forgiven, once you know that God has forgiven you, then you got to start working on forgiving yourself. And you have some counseling. We do. You, we you do. do. We offer um, a po what we call post-abortion recovery because it's really a recovery issue. It's a reclamation of your old self because they've regretted all through their life. Some of these women, I know some of these women, and some of them can't conceive anymore. They can't have babies anymore. Right. You know, they've gone through their whole life. They, they, at age 16 or 17 or 18, they found out they were pregnant. They made a decision to abort and something went awry and suddenly they can't have kids. And they've always wanted children. And, and there's others that, you know, it manifests itself in, in substance dependency, either alcohol or drugs. It may manifest in, in their inability to have any kind of relationship with a man. Mm -hmm. um, they have run away from the church. You know, there's all kinds of things that some of them become suicidal. Um, you know, there's all kinds of things. So, so what we try to do what we try to tell them is this, we've got a safe place for you. We've got a place where we can meet with other women who have been through the exact same thing you've gone through. And they've, they've realized the healing power of our God, and they've realized that over time they can learn to forgive themselves. Walk us through exactly a, a, a young lady comes in to the clinic and says, uh, I think I'm pregnant. Uh, what is kind of the steps as she goes through that process? Well, the first step is we do a little bit of do a little bit of history on her, just like you would in a normal doctor's office. You fill out an intake form, and then we give her a pregnancy test. Okay. Um, uh, and she just we administer a pregnancy test, and then if she is pregnant, which I, we said on the last show, about half of them aren't. And that's surprising to me because because I would have thought that people come in there for the most part they are pregnant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's surprising. And what's also surprising is some of these young women don't have any idea because of because of the way our education system is going and the cuts that we've seen. They're cutting out health classes and they're cutting out all this stuff. And parents aren't having these discussions with these women, and some of them don't have any idea how their body works. Okay. So, so they may think they're pregnant. They just have no idea how their body works. So, um, so we give them a pregnancy test. If they are pregnant, we try to encourage them to have an ultrasound. Okay. Uh, that's kind of what we refer to as the window on the womb. And they're able to see this child. They're able to see a heartbeat most of the time after five or six weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and generally that cements the relationship between mother and child. Okay. And that's, a, that's an important thing. Now. Eight, about 82% of all women who were previously thinking about having an abortion 
who saw their child in an ultrasound decided not to have the abortion. So that's a really, really important thing. That, and then again, from, that's a pro that's that's an interesting it's a, statistic. It's a big number. Yeah, and it's a good number. Well, because then they're seeing life there. Right. It's, that's exactly. It's, it's true. just not some tissue or something. No. Yeah, they're seeing yeah. they're seeing a life. And they they uh, then we start plugging them into what then we start talking with them about what this means in their life, and and what we can do. Many of them, I think, we talked earlier about uh, not you know how do I tell mom and dad. Yeah. You know, how do I tell the boyfriend? How do I tell the father of the child, you know? And and it, it's just a very, very difficult time. And and we try to walk them through that if they let us. Right. Some women, they find out that they're pregnant, they come through, they have a, uh, an ultrasound, and they decide, I'm going to carry this child to term, and we never hear from them again. Right. There are other... Uh, women who decide they're gonna have this child and they keep coming back because they want to give back to PDHC right. because we've allowed them to give life to their child. So and at the last uh, dinner and I've seen this uh, young man he was a, a teenager oh, and, yeah. and uh, what a testimony he gives because his mother was going to have an abortion exactly and then uh, she changed her mind and, and now he's a spokesperson, right? Right, right. Caleb, he's he's a he's a real champ. He, yes, he is. He came to us. A great speaker. Uh, and his father's a pastor and he he came to us uh, gosh, about a year ago. He he spoke at the Lancaster banquet here last year and then at the Pickerington banquet that you attended and and he's just very happy to be alive. That's right. Because his mother was actually seated inside of an abortion facility with an appointment to have the abortion and decided not to. And that's why he's even alive today. Wow. So it's wow. just a beautiful story. But those stories, I have to say, those stories happen every day, you know, and, and it's, important, it's important for all of us to understand that it, what it means to be pro-life really, and that is to love one another and to be careful that we are charitable to one another. And that right. means helping a pregnant woman at the grocery store. It means holding the door for someone. It may be, it may be uh, uh, calling someone who, who uh, has, is going through an unexpected pregnancy and actually listening. You know, we don't listen to each other these days in this culture, I don't think. And, and just being kind to one another. That's really what it means to be pro-life and helping each other. And that's what PDHC does. Well, with us today is uh, Tim Welsh, and, and Tim, I do appreciate uh, your steadfastness, your leadership in this area. Thank you. Um, someone out there today listening to him, and, uh, and they may want to, to uh, get involved, or what, what, uh, what can they do to help, uh, well, help you? You know, they can, uh, one of the things that we ask everybody to do is to pray for us. And you know, there's uh, we we used to, we had a nurse that worked with us for 19 years. She would always pray for the confusion of the employees inside of an abortion facility, okay. just so that they might pick up the wrong form, or they might drop their pen, or just anything that would slow the process down. But beyond that, um, uh, you know, there's volunteer opportunities. There's there's donations that we gladly accept. I mean, they can always call our hotline at 444-4411 and get involved in any way they really want to get involved. And certainly financial donations, mm -hmm. uh, you need that because you're, it's, it's through charity, it's yeah. through other people's giving. Yeah, and you know, we, we talked before, and I, I, don't know if, I, I don't know if this is sort of too fantastic for some people, but we really do believe at PDHC, we have one donor, and that donor is God. And if we please God, if what we are doing pleases our donor, we'll be just fine financially. We, we really believe that. Yeah, things in the future for, uh, for PDC, well, PDHC. We're, we're going to be, um, the vision for PDHC is to be the leader in women's reproductive health services in Central Ohio. And to that end, we have to open up new offices. We'll open up an office in Pickerington, certainly by the end of June. We'll have another office opened up in Franklinton, which is just on the near sort of west side of Columbus in the inner city. Uh, that'll probably be open about the same time. Uh, and we're also going to have to expand services. We're going to have to start doing more STD testing. We're going to be doing pap smears. We're going to be doing mammography. We're going to be doing all of the, all of the things that women rely on for rep uh, reproductive health services in order to take away from 
the real stronghold that Planned Parenthood has on our culture. Now, is, is uh, PDHC, is that a national organization or is that more local? It's local? just purely local. In so fact, that is, this is it? Yep. Okay. Yep, yep. In fact, there are 2,500 of PDHCs all over this country. Okay. And uh, they each operate independently. Okay. And they each operate uh, 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 the same, uh, essentially the same way we do. Yeah. Well, we're proud of you, proud of the work you do, Thank and proud you. of your leadership because uh, um, I know you've dedicated most of your adult life yeah. uh, to these kind of uh, issues, and, uh, and God bless you to Thank that. You. Thank you. Tim Welch with us this Thank afternoon, you. and uh, Tim Welch a great guy, and uh, do appreciate his steadfastness, his uh, work right here in Lancaster and throughout Fairfield County. Do appreciate you, the viewers and listeners that join us. And I don't think there's a week that goes by that I don't have some citizen out there say they saw this program. And uh, so I appreciate the folks here at Fairfield Christian Academy that produced this program, put it together, J.T. Bircham and the staff, and certainly you, the viewers and listeners, that join us each and every week and all the calls I get in the office. If you have any calls uh, that you need answered, call me directly at the Sheriff's Office. My number is 740-652-7252. Get calls all the time and do appreciate uh, the citizens and uh, certainly their support, their questions, and many times their concerns that they have about Fairfield County. The clock on the wall, the old clock on the wall, says it's about time to go. Do appreciate you, the viewers and listeners. We'll see you right here next week, same time, same place. God bless, and we'll see you then. Trouble? No, you're not in trouble. I just uh, want to set some ground rules. Like, like what? Well, remember last week when you hit Vinny in the head with the shovel? <laughs> I do not recall that. <laughs> of course not. Well, it was pretty graphic. Too graphic for the kids. <laughs> so I'm going to have to block you. I, you know, i got to make this up to you. This is Vinny's watch, and I want you to have it. You deserve no, it. Thank you. That's really not necessary. No, no. Come here.